Okay, well, uh, Arvind Sanger is now joining us, Managing Partner at Geosphere Capital Management. Uh, Arvind, good morning. Uh, great to have you with us here on the program. Thanks very much. Uh, you know, things are looking good, aren't they? Almost, uh, I don't want to use the word, the often abused word, Goldilocks. <laughs> but, you know, inflation is coming under control in the U.S. Uh, I hope it's not one of those things where we see a sharp reacceleration in the next sprint. Uh, but many indicators are now pointing to perhaps a softer inflation number, whereas the labor market in the U.S. is still pretty strong, exactly what the Fed would have wanted. Your thoughts on what this means for markets? Uh, I think we're in this, uh, uh, you know, I guess Goldilocks, uh, you use the word, and that is a popular term, uh, you know, soft landing, whatever you call it, hope. Uh, I think that, you know, clearly uh, the Fed is going to raise 25 basis points. That's uh, almost certainly on the cards for next week. But beyond that, they're probably going to, you know, give a signal of pausing and looking at data. Uh, the real challenge, I think, is going to come later in the year. If inflation comes down to 3% and gets stuck there, what do they do? Right? It's headed in that direction or does it go lower? And if it goes to 25 2 everything is, is great. But, you know, I, I think uh, there are question marks about whether all of this will end well. But uh, I think the reality is that for the next few months, uh, I do not expect any nasty surprises for the next couple of months. And therefore, I think it's time for the markets to continue to, uh, you know, to do well, particularly you know, uh, risk on as it's on, uh, money will flow into emerging markets. And, uh, and India is obviously one of the better position emerging markets globally. So that's uh, a sweet spot to be. And Arvind, hi, good morning. That's the problem, right, with these markets. Just when you expect no nasty surprises, boom, there comes one nasty surprise. So the market doesn't always oblige. And this has been a market that has sort of climbed every single wall of worry up until now. Are there any risks on the horizon that equity investors need to be worried about, especially in a market like India? Or do you think it's a clean slate until the end of the year? Well, I mean, look, uh, uh, monsoons is proving to be a little bit of a mixed bag. Right, you have deficient monsoon in the south. You have too much rain in the north. So rather than looking at the total monsoons, you have to look at that. And what are the implications for some, you know, vegetable and other inflation? So inflation has been, you know, India has been one of the best places in the world in terms of inflation being completely under control. Now you're seeing global inflation come down. Certainly in the U.S., is there a risk that Indian inflation could, uh, you know, could start to harden a little bit? Uh, you know, it's not a central case, but it's something worth keeping an eye on uh, because, you know, that would be uh, kind of contrary to what is trends going on globally. And it's something that could cause uh, some near term nervousness about, you know, RBI's ability to cut rates and maybe even uh, having to go the other way if things get out of control. That's, again, not the central case, but it's definitely a, a factor that people cannot completely ignore. Hi, Arvind. Good morning. Uh, Arvind, you said no nasty surprise coming in from the Fed, but will there be a Pleasant surprise. Do they go ahead and cut rates later this year? That seems to be, you know, what global equities are factoring in at least the last couple of weeks. I don't think, uh, when I look at the probability uh, for uh, rate cuts, the expectation is not for a rate cut later this okay. year, but the expectation is for a rate cut early next year. But yeah, if the Fed gives a clear signal that uh, they are, you know, close to being done or that they sound a little more dovish that they can afford to be patient since inflation is coming down, that will certainly provide a little more fuel to the fire of uh, the optimists. So I think that, you know, uh, the more likely outlook is something on that line. All right. Arvind, just one more point. Uh, you know, I recall when you visited our studio, you were quite positive on a couple of domestic themes out here. But how are you positioned on IT uh, themes? Because the IT companies they started reacting to uh, reporting numbers uh, last week. And the street wasn't prepared for any kind of positive surprise. But it wasn't so bad, it seems. And those IT stocks here in India have given big returns just in the last three to four sessions. Your, your positioning on well, tech? Well, we are, we are not there. Look, at some point here, when things get cheap and get lagged enough, then there is a value rotation possible into IT. And I think uh, uh, IT is one that you know, we've kind of kept an eye on. Uh, but, you know, if we rotate out of some of our stocks when they get expensive, we would look at IT as value plays. But I think, you know, I remain somewhat cautious on the U.S. economy, uh, uh, you know, later this year and early next year. I still see a recession risk. So IT may be a trade, but I'm not sure fundamentally uh, whether IT is a place to be. I, I, I think there are going to be opportunities selectively 
particularly you know with AI and everything associated with this becoming more of a theme in 24, 25, uh, I want to look at companies that are positioned in India to be able to provide the services needed for implementation of that, which may not necessarily be all the broad-based large IT companies, mm. but it'd be more selective IT names that would benefit from that more significantly. Mm. Arvind, uh, you know, <clears throat> just one, uh, just an observation actually, more than a question, I don't know if you have anything uh, on this one, but more, there's almost a drumbeat of uh, opinion coming through uh, on how, you know, the next decade is India's and uh, you, you've got Capital International, for example, writing an essay uh, which uh, is, is uh, being uh, circulated quite a bit. And very, very, very well written uh, piece underlying the fundamental structural advantages that India has. Uh, you know, Bernstein wrote something recently. Morgan has been pointing out, uh, and of course, there are so many others. Uh, how, how do you how do you read all of this? I mean, there are those who say, well, we've seen this story play out before. Uh, you know, I, I've seen mm -hmm. this uh, in two, uh, 2006, 2007. Uh, but uh, would you take that as a sign of caution at the margin or would you say that, I mean, you know, this will, uh, this adds a put for markets. I mean, you know, it won't let markets fall too much whenever that selling does uh, come through because of these structural kind of eye on the longer horizon. Your sense? Well, I mean, I must admit to being guilty of the same thing. I hosted a panel at Asia Society in uh, New York about a month ago talking about is the coming decade, India's decade, uh, uh, with a few uh, panelists uh, discussing exactly the same issue. So yes, uh, you know, I am cautious having seen India for a while of India having the tendency to not miss any opportunity to miss an opportunity. But uh, the reality is that this time, uh, the confluence of global circumstances yeah. are falling into India's la uh, lap, right? That the, the fact that China is, uh, uh, you know, self-selecting itself out and the global uh, you know, uh, well, political system is uh, the West is looking for alternatives to China. And in the past, for textiles and other things, Southeast Asia, Bangladesh could all step up. But, it, but when it comes to large scale manufacturing and electronics and elsewhere, there's no other large domestic plus export market that can be developed. And, and India's, you know, what used to be India's negative, its large population, mm -hmm. is today India's biggest strength. And having had, you know, a confluence of circumstances. You have uh, a lot of infrastructure that has come together. You have a financial infrastructure that has come together. You have the cheapest data. You have a lot of smartphones. You yeah. have a huge penetration of data. So it's a confluence of circumstances that have come together. And I Absolutely. think uh, India is uh, in a position to take advantage of it. Okay, and I think the, I mean, we're not alone, right? It's like a global a sort of a wave that's taken all markets with it. Got that. Thanks a lot, Arvind. Appreciate your thoughts. And thanks for joining us on CNBC TV 18 this morning. Let's slip into a quick break. There are plenty of stocks. There's a big $2 billion deal that Infosys has inked. We'll talk more about that on the other side of the break. Do keep it with CNBC TV 18.